sensory loss, a normal part of the aging process, right? Forgetting where you've put your keys, forgetting whether you've turned off the iron, even forgetting the name of a family friend. This is normal and happens to us all. But memory that causes someone to lose their way, forget common words, or be less productive at work, this could indicate mild cognitive impairment. By the time a person forgets their own address, cannot manage their own finances, or withdraws from social interaction. This could indicate dementia or even Alzheimer's disease. Dementia destroys the cells in the brain called neurons. These neurons are responsible for driving our curiosity, our capacity to learn, our creativity, and indeed our human connections, the very things that determine who we are. Dementia robs us of our memory and of our independence. 50 million people around the world today live with dementia, and this number is expected to triple over the next 30 years. Here in Australia, half a million people, close to half a million people, are living with dementia, and they and their families struggle to cope. Dementia is not a normal part of the aging process. Despite intensive efforts by clinicians and scientists to date, an effective prevention and treatment remains elusive. As a dietitian and nutrition scientist, I'm curious about the power of bioactive compounds found in foods to combat cognitive decline and memory loss. I believe that a breakthrough is possible, and the purple theme of my talk will soon become clear. About 10 years ago, I had the good fortune to lunch with Professor, the late Professor Jim Joseph. While eating his walnut salad full of antioxidants and good fats, he told me about some remarkable research he was doing with aged rats that had memory loss similar to Alzheimer's in humans. When he fed these aged rats blueberry extract and put them in an opaque water maze, these rats were able to find underwater platforms. They were able to learn where these were, similarly to rats that had that were young and had no memory loss whatsoever. So in other words, he could reverse the memory loss. And I was fascinated. If this could happen in rats, why not in humans? But the trials had not been done. Not long after that lunch, I met a plant scientist from an, from an agri-technology company in Orange. And their company had perfected a way of making cherry juice um, preserving the bioactive compounds known as anthocyanins. And these are the same compounds that are found in the blueberries that were given to the rats. And he offered us access to this juice. So rather naively, together with a PhD student, Catherine Kent, I entered into this complex world of neuroscience and dementia research. We conducted a controlled clinical trial in older adults with Alzheimer's disease. We may not traditionally think of foods as a complex array of molecules. We prefer to think of our food for its taste, its texture, its appearance, its smell. But some foods offer us much more than this. Bioactive compounds are, um, sorry, phytonutrients are bioactive compounds found in plant foods. And within the phytonutrients, there is a group called flavonoids. Flavonoids are known for the antioxidant properties, and they are um, a class that are showing particular um, potential in terms of effects on brain health. Within the flavonoids uh, class, there are six different subclasses, and key foods within each of those classes, subclasses is shown here. And you can see at the top, anthocyanins are found in fruits. They're found in fruits that have purple, blue, and deep red color. So the anthocyanins give the fruits their pigment. Anthocyanins are also found in red wine um, and some vegetables such as red cabbage and red onion. So back to our cherry juice study. We recruited 49 older people with mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease and we randomly allocated them to either get 200 mils per day of the special cherry juice or a control juice of apple apple juice uh, with no anthocyanins. We followed people for 12 weeks. We asked them to consume this for 12 weeks daily. And we, we conducted a whole battery 
of cognitive tests. And the test that we found to be the most uh, sensitive in terms of um, dietary change was something called the RAVELT, Ray Auditory Verbal Learning Test. And this is a test where people are asked to uh, repeat a series of 15 words, and this is repeated over various trials. And it's a very sensitive measure of memory. So, lo and behold, what did we find? If you have a look at the graph, the purple bar is the cherry juice group. Um, we found an improvement in the number of words that people could remember after taking the cherry juice. This was evident at 12 weeks, but it was also evident at six weeks, after just six weeks. Uh, this was remarkable, and this was a, a world first, and um, to our knowledge, to date, remains the largest human trial of its kind. We've since moved on to work with other fruits. We work with the Queen Garnet Plum, which is an Australian bread plum that has double the anthocyanin content of normal plums. And there are many indigenous Australian fruits that are particularly high in anthocyanin content, and I've got a couple of pictures up there to show you, one of which is the Illawarra Plum, a local plum. So it's too early to show you the results from our Queen Garnet Plum studies, but what I can say is when we give 300 mils of pureed plum to healthy older people, we see a rapid decline in blood pressure over um, a period of six hours. And this may give us a clue as to the benefits in brain health. So how do they work? Um, anthocyanins work um, in several ways. Um, First of all, they are antioxidants. They scavenge free radicals in the brain, prevent damage to the cells in the brain. They reduce inflammation in the brain. They also help prevent cell deaths of the neurons and uh, prevent the sticky buildup of amyloid beta proteins that, that form the plaques that are common in dementia. But here at Wollongong, we, we focus our efforts looking at the vascular effects. So the effects of the anthocyanins on blood vessels within the body um, in terms of increasing blood flow to the brain. I'm not expecting you to look at this, gra it, this figure in any great detail, but I can hear the skeptics in the audience saying, well, how do you know it's actually the food? And that's a really good question because food studies are complex. First of all, we need to understand the metabolism of the bioactive compounds. Anthocyanins are rapidly broken down in the gut and this depends to a very large extent on um, having healthy gut microbiota. So you may have heard of um, the gut-brain axis. Anthocyanins are broken down into substances called metabolites, and these are rapidly excreted in the urine. So what we're doing now in all of our studies is measuring urine and blood concentrations to better understand the, metabol the metabolism of these bioactive compounds. Um, when I say cherries, what comes to mind? Christmas, I hear people whispering, well, that's because cherries are seasonal, as are all stone fruits. Um, so when we're conducting our trials, um, seasonality of the test food, because we have to provide a consistent dose of the test food over the period of the study. So this does pose some challenges to us. Lastly, can we find a magic bullet? Can we just take a pill, a potion, um, even a powder? Well, the answer to that is no. When the anthocyanins are taken out of the food matrix in which they naturally occur, you don't see the same benefits. Lastly, it's likely that anthocyanins in food may interact with other nutrients, and they may show synergistic effects with foods in the diet. So in other words, they may have a greater effect when consumed in combination with other foods rather than on their own. And this is a line of research that, that we will be pursuing uh, in our future work here at UOW. So I need to put all of this into context. A bowl of cherries or a couple of plums will not counteract um, other lifestyle factors that are implicated in cogn cognitive decline. Quitting smoking, cutting down on saturated fat, remaining physically active, these are crucial to keep aging brains healthy. I would like to leave you now with a quote from Hippocrates, the ancient Greek physician considered to be the father of medicine. So ladies and gentlemen, my big idea is to stop or prevent progression of memory decline in its early stages through dietary approaches. Yes, the foods that we eat, the foods that are commonly available in the supermarket, not expensive drugs or complex therapies, 
but through plant-based foods. The future looks bright purple. Thank you.